<laughs> well, here's the reason. Well, that's, well, you're, you're comparing uh, a murder. Well, one to second. Some, what have one I second. done? One second. Are you one, trying to accuse me that well, I have, if I were to ask you how to become a Christian, what would you tell me? Also, he's just recording over there. We're just out here today. I can say everybody has different stories of how uh, they grow in the faith and how they give their time and trust in Jesus. Okay. So what would you say is the way to become a Christian? So if I'm like your friend, so if I'm, what's your name? Dewey. Dewey? And what's your name? Jonah. Okay, Dewey and Jonah. So if I'm yes, Dewey, sir. what would you tell Dewey if he asked you that question? You believe like the Lord is your savior. But before that, I'll be like, you know, I'll just talk to, talk to him more about the Bible because I feel like the Bible is really like the, the key to our hearts and how we feel. Okay. And then I'll start taking him to church. Okay, so true or false to this statement? To be a Christian, okay. you should be a good person. Be a Christian. Should, well, that's, 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 it has error because in the beginning, he was already, he was already rooted in sin from the fall of Adam and Eve. Okay. So, yes, a Christian, because as a Christian, we should be living to be a good person. To be a Christian, you have to be a good person. That's I say, false. Okay. So, would you say that if you're like, say you're like Muslim, and say you're like a pretty good person, like you do all these good works, right. do you think they can make it to heaven? It depends. I respect everybody else's religion and everything else, but sometimes I knew I had uh, some people from the Islamic faith uh, come over to Christianity just because... Uh, of the Bible that they read and how it was different from the Quran. Okay. So you'd say maybe they can? Yeah. Okay. Do you think you're a good enough person that you're going to make it to heaven? Or same to you? Um, Lord willing that I'm able to see his face someday. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Just taking steps each day to become more like him and to see his face every day. We're both young. We still have a whole life ahead of us, so we don't know if we're going to I'm young too, man. Yeah, like, I'm 18. You're young too. You're, I'm 18. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we decide whether we're going to go or not. It all depends on how our soul is so so decide. would what would your guess be if both of you were to say if you're going to heaven or you're going to hell which one are you going to heaven are you like sure about that well my mindset is focused on heaven so or are you an atheist or are you maybe not, not sure I'm about not a, it a very heavy religious person okay my family they're all catholics they're very religious they're very heavy i'm not an atheist though i do believe in the idea of a creator okay and I believe right because there's yeah i don't think we were even if you try to use science it's, it, I don't want to get too much into that. You okay. Know China, you know what I mean? Right. But you would say if God were to have a heaven and hell, you're going to make it to heaven pretty much. I don't know. You're, but you're not sure. Okay. I don't know. So shouldn't we find that out really quick? Because, I mean, Jesus said, and I think even if you're not a Christian, you can agree with this statement. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but, but loses, loses, his his, soul. loses his soul? So just something to think about here. We want to make sure that you're making it to heaven. Yeah. Right. So let me ask both of you guys. You both think that you're pretty good people, is that correct? I think he's a great person. That's that's what I've been told, but I just try to live my life. Uh, okay, so we're just going to look at the Ten Commandments, because that's God's law, to see if we're good people, okay? Yeah. Jonah, have you ever told lies? Yes, I have told lies. Okay, what about you, Dewey? I have too. Okay, so what do you call somebody that tells lies? A liar. A liar. Okay, right. so you guys are both liars. So have you ever stolen something? No, that I have not. Never, even if it's small, like a like a pencil or a candy bar or a. No, in the beginning, I was always asked to. Yeah, I'd always it. ask if I wanted to borrow something. I'd be like, "Can I borrow that?" Okay, well, good on you. So, have you guys ever used God's name in vain? So, hit your thumb with a hammer. Say, "Oh my." Yeah. I don't know. Okay. All right. So the Bible says God will not hold him guiltless that uses His name in the cuss word. That's like a, you know, in the Ten Commandments, kind of like explaining that one. That's the Second Commandment. One more to go. Have you, either of you, ever? looked with loss you know more in depth into that because yeah. i feel like that's more of uh how you, because we all have hormones we have uh whether you know if you want to go more into like science about like more hormones and whatnot but i feel like it's more of how how you was raised and how your parents set you on how to look at it okay but that's not the question have you ever looked with lust no i have not looked with lust. you've never looked at pornography no okay i have all right I'll be honest with that i'm not at the end of the day like i'm human like i'm a guy you have thoughts you have never thought lustful thoughts jonah but yes I have are you red-blooded male I, like yes i have thought lustful thoughts but not like i look at a girl and be like oh my goodness in your entire life you're telling me yes okay so not judging you have you be honest. You, of course okay. i'm gonna have good news but we have to go through this bad part first okay so you guys have told me Joni, you've told me you're a lying blasphemer and maybe adulterer at heart you've told me dewey that you're a lying blasphemous adulterate at heart and so both of you if god's are you able to walk, um yeah but i 
just really quickly, okay? I'm not just going to tell you all this bad stuff trying to send you to hell, okay? No, no, you're good, you're good. It's just like, we ought to, we ought to Okay, so just really quickly. So, and you're both self-righteous because you said you're good people, and it's obvious you're not like, you're like the rest of us, right? And the reason why I'm out here is because I deserve to go to hell, okay? And I'm going to put that out there. Both of you guys have told me that you're guilty. Would you agree with that? That you've broken God's law? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the Bible says that all liars have their part in the lake of fire. Okay, so that's what the Bible says. Now, Jesus said, if your eye caused you to sin, cut it out and cast it from you, because it's better to go to heaven with one eye than go to hell with both your eyes. But we don't, how can we possibly do that, right? How can we get right with God if we've already sinned? Do you know? Um, you make mistakes, you commit sins, you commit all type of bad things, but it depends on whether you learn from it and change yourself and not make the same mistakes again. But Dewey, here's the problem with that. If I go to a judge in court and I tell them, Hey judge, I know, you know, I murdered somebody or maybe I had some speeding tickets or whatever it was. And I say, judge, listen, I have changed my ways and I'm just, I, maybe I did good works. Maybe I helped the old lady across the street. Maybe, you know, I've just, I've really been changing. I know I murdered that lady in cold blood, but trust me, I'm changing. I'm getting better. That's not going to work. And the Bible says, yeah, but that's not how life works. Because well, the reason why it is put in a position like that, you can't just be like, Hey bro. I've changed. Like, that's not how it works. Well, here's the reason. Well, that's, you're, well, you're comparing uh, a, a murder well, one to second. Some, what have one I second. done? One second. You're trying to accuse me. It's going to be a paradigm shift for you. It's going to change your way of thinking, okay? Psalm 711 says God is a righteous judge, okay? And if a judge were to do that on earth, we'd go like, judge, that's not righteous, and you certainly shouldn't be a judge anymore, okay? And so God made a way of escape that Jonah talked about what happened 2,000 years ago so that we could be made right with God? All right, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't even paying attention. Okay. All right, okay. You learn from it, you better yourself, or you die. That's how it works. Say good, say that, because, okay, look, I know what you're trying, I, I know what you're trying to do, but like, I think you were trying to, that analogy you just put out, like, that doesn't relate to me. Cause, so, because I know I would never murder a person. But so here's just, the problem the Bible says that if you hate a brother, you're a murderer. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. God's standard, he's an infinite God who has to be righteous. If we do even a little thing, it has to be punished. We might not think of sin bad, but that's because we sin and we don't understand it because our minds don't really get it. Here's what the Bible says. Okay, okay. Here's what the Bible says. It says the wages of sin is death. That's why we all die. So you're going to die someday. I'm going to die someday. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus, 2000 years ago, came to earth, lived a perfect life, was fully God and fully man, the only way he could live a perfect life, and died on the cross for our sins. Now, you might have heard that, but you might not have heard this, okay? And this is going to change everything. And even Jonah, this might help you understand the gospel in, in a way that maybe you can say, I don't know if you believe this, but you just didn't articulate it this way. But if we're in a court, in that same court of law, say we have a million dollars in fines, okay? If someone else pays those fines, we're free to go. And Jesus paid our fines by living the perfect life that we couldn't live and dying on the cross, satisfying the wrath of God. Here's an analogy that might help this make a little bit more sense. If I'm in an airplane and it's going down, what's going to motivate me to put on a parachute? Save my life. Right. Okay. And we'd be fearful that we were going to die. Okay. And in the same way, right, if we go back to what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul, there's a fear there, right? When Jesus said that, there's a fear. There's like, oh man, I know I'm going to die someday, right? And that fear motivates me to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? The calling for a Christian is to repent and put their faith in Jesus for everlasting life. That's the message of the Bible. So repentance is turning from sin and faith is trusting in him the same way you'd trust in a parachute, okay? You can't call yourself a Christian and lie and steal and blaspheme and just, you know, go onward in doing that because the Bible says, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving your own selves. A thought with that is to trust in Jesus instead of any good work to save you, okay? Because our good works, according to the Bible, are filthy rags to God. And that'd be like if I'm in that airplane, let's say I'm in that airplane up there and it starts going down, okay? And I try to, you know, flap my arms instead of put on a parachute. Yeah. That's that's going to be detrimental. That's like, you know, if I don't have the right decision to put the parachute on or not, that's going to change the outcome of if I live or die. Yeah. Okay. So this decision is not just, you know, oh, well, maybe I'll think about it. Yeah. Right. There's an action that is yeah. right.
So when are you guys going to die? How about that? <laughs> Do you know? Of course not. Right. So when should you put your faith in Jesus? I don't know. I do. Are you trying to... When should I put my faith? What about you, Jonah? Have you put your faith in Jesus? Because you told me you're kind of leaning towards good works. And if your parachute were loose, I'd want that to be tight. I'd want to make sure it's on, right? So just you too, Jonah. Do you think you've put your faith in Jesus and that it's tight? Are you really, are you trusting in your good works, but you say you're a Christian? Or is your parachute actually tight? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Look, I'm, I'm answering for myself. I and mean, also it's my best brother, best friend. I know that, uh, that throughout my life, I put my faith every day and every step and God will show you that uh, my good and faithful servant you have shown me that you put your faith in me every day I'm going to continue to bless you but I have been through some times where good things happen to that there's been times where you know God why is this happening just like you were saying with the parachute I know my parachute type because I I read the word I make sure to have gratitude for God I make sure to pray each and every day it's not just one day and it's like just like what he's doing here preaching the gospel God sees that so yes I do believe that my parents do. Okay. okay. I do want to give you a thought. There are people that read the Quran every day, but they're not Christian. Jesus said, I'm the only way to the Father. There's no way but by me. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Right. Like, we can read the Bible every day. We can do plenty of good works. But it has to be a faith in Jesus. And that faith is paired with turning from sin. If you say you're a Christian and you're following Jesus, but then you go and Let's say I go to like a club tonight and then I go and just, you know, have promiscuous sex with a bunch of ladies or whatever. You know, that's like I'm not being genuine. I'm not truly following Jesus because I'm living that life of sin instead of living a life for him. We can right? say verses and stuff like that, but having the Bible and knowing how to read it, not just read it, but knowing how to study and read the word is the most important part of being a Christian. Like, right. I would agree. I love what you're doing I love, what was your name again? My name's Dimitri. Dimitri. Nice to meet you, Jonah, Jonah. Dewey. and Dewey. Great to meet you guys. But really, consider, is your faith in Jesus, right? Because our good works, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, it is by grace that you are saved, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's the difference from Christianity and all other religions. So seriously think about this, because just like I said, you don't know when you're going to die, okay? I, we, I could die on my drive home, you know? We, we never know. So, We're young, but we could die. So basically, in all this, put my faith into him right now, because you never know yes. when your life could be taken away. Right. You snap, just like that. Yeah. It's basically, it's hold it. Right. I respect that. Please consider praying for this channel and go watch the video where Jeremy answered the big questions of life. God bless.